Flying geese and scraps are two of my favorite quilty things, but they don't always play really nicely together. If you have a lot of, say, five inch squares left over or have a layer cake that you want to make flying geese with to sew together to make a quilt, then if you look at four at a time flying geese instructions, it will have you trim all of those squares down, maybe even just a quarter of an inch or so. And that is no fun. So today I'm going to show you how to take the squares you already have in your scrap bin and make flying geese to work with those measurements. If we want to start with the fabric that we already have cut to a certain size instead of the finished size of a flying goose, then we need to do a little bit of a math lesson first. Let's start with what a flying geese unit is. A flying geese unit is a rectangular unit that is usually about half as tall as it is wide. So you can have one that is one half an inch tall by one inch wide, or it can be three inches tall and six inches wide, as long as that two to one proportion works. Now the actual unit looks something like this. It has a large triangle and then two smaller triangles off to the side. And this line right here at the point is the midline of that rectangle. So if you've done a little quilting before, then you may notice that our flying goose unit looks a lot like two half square triangle units that are sewn together. So if we were to take this guy and sew him to his little friend, then you would end up with something that looks a lot like the flying goose unit here. And that property is what is going to make this math a lot easier. So if you are like me, you have a pile of a million charm squares laying around and they are five inches by five inches. When you are making four at a time flying geese, you use four squares that are the same size and those are gonna be my charm squares. So I'm gonna use four, four five by five squares and then you also need one large square. But how big is this square supposed to be? So let's go back to our half square triangle friends for just one second. If we were going to make our flying goose unit using these squares, then we would cut a five inch green square, our leftover charm packs, and then we would cut another five inch square from scraps or background. And then we would make one at a time half square triangles by sewing on the diagonal and cutting off the excess and pressing them out. And that would give us our flying goose unit but we don't want the seam down the middle. That's not the point of making flying geese. Maybe this is a print that you don't want to interrupt or you just don't like sewing together half square triangles. If we look at what we're actually doing here when we seam these together is that we're just removing a seam allowance. We're sewing these two blocks together, which removes two seam allowances from these half square triangles. So we are just removing a half an inch from this length of our side. So now instead of five inches, this measures nine and a half. We have taken two five inch squares, sewn them together, and that cost us a quarter of an inch twice because there are two seam allowances. So those together equal one half. So nine and one half. And that is the size of our mystery square that we need to cut. So if you are starting with small squares, your large square will equal your small square times two minus one half. So let's say you have a bunch of three and a half inch squares left over from a project. Three and one half times two minus one half is seven minus one half equals six and one half. And that will be the perfect size square to cut to make flying geese units with all of those three and a half inch squares that you already have. Let's say you're starting with the large square instead. You have a layer cake that you wanna make into four at a time flying geese to sew all together into a quilt. You have a 10 inch layer cake and you need to know the size of the four small squares that you would cut to match that. If you're starting with a large square, your small squares are going to equal your large square size plus one half divided by two. 
So in this case, we have a 10 inch square that we want to use up plus one half divided by two. 10 and one half divided by two equals five and one quarter. So we would cut four five and a quarter squares to match up with our 10 inch square and that would make perfect four to time flying geese. So the downside of working with scraps and customizing your flying geese to your scraps is that your flying geese are gonna end up some really weird sizes. So in this example where we started with a 10 inch square, our flying geese are gonna end up something really weird like, like eight and three quarters by four four and three eighths. So a weird size. But if you are making a quilt completely out of these flying geese, then it doesn't matter because they all are the same size. So they'll all still go together. You'll still have great points and it'll still all match up and everything. The complexity comes if you want to use some of these flying geese, say you have leftovers from this project that you want to incorporate into future projects that you need an actual normal size of flying geese for, then you can simply Simply trim them down. This could easily be trimmed down into an eight by four flying goose. Now I love my Creative Grids trim tool and this would be a great use for it. You could use these weird size flying geese, just trim them down and be good to go. I am going to make all of my flying geese the same and sew them all together into one quilt. So there's no trimming involved in this. So now that you know how to customize your squares to whatever scrap sizes you have, we're gonna return to the pattern, which uses five inch charm squares as the small squares. I have already cut my large square down to nine and a half inches, so we are ready to go. The first thing we're gonna do is mark a diagonal line on the back of each of our small squares. I'm using a pen here, you can use a pencil, you can press this line in by folding your squares in half and just giving them a little tap with the iron, whatever uh, marking method you would like to use. These small squares will end up being the outer wings of our flying geese, where the large square is the aqua square in our pattern, and it will end up being that larger triangle in the center. When I made my quilt, I randomly chose my small squares uh, for this step. But if you have two squares that you definitely don't want to be on the same flying goose at the end, then you should use them both in this first step. And then they will be on two different flying geese units when it's all cut apart. I am just aligning two of my small squares to opposite corners. I'm going to stick a few pins in this and then I am going to sew a quarter of an inch on either side of this line. Once we have those lines sewn, then I am going to cut these apart on the line that you drew, the diagonal line. Now we have two funky little heart shapes and now we're going to take our final two squares and align them on the diagonal. And you want that diagonal to be pointing at the kind of valley between these two charm square mountains. And I know it looks like these two that I said would be on different flying geese are on the same one, but we are eventually going to cut them apart. So just as before, I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch line on each side of both of these drawn lines. Same process as before, we cut on the drawn line and then we will press them open. So here are our four finished flying geese. They are perfect and look great and are totally a weird wonky size. And that's okay because the pattern that these are for assumes that they are all the same weird wonky size. So they will still all fit together. And once you have made uh, approximately a bajillion of them, you can sew them together in a couple of different ways. I ended up making my quilt like this diagram where all of the flying geese centers were pointing in the same direction. And I used just a green yardage for my background color. And all of my little corner pieces were print scraps from my Charm Square collection. But because flying geese have that great two by one proportion, you can have some fun with the layout. You can alternate your rows or you can even flip some rows and have them go in the different directions because they are as long as two are tall. Obviously there would be a, a seam allowance in there that would get these to match up perfectly. So you can have a lot of fun with the layout and make it your own. 
I hope that you guys really enjoyed this. This is another, I know, a little bit more mathy lesson, but I want you guys to really love and understand and be able to do whatever you want with quilting. And sometimes that involves a little bit of math, but if you understand it, then you can really do anything. You can make any pattern from scratch that you want. And um, I love quilting a lot and I want you guys to love it too, whatever that means to you. So until we meet again, happy quilting. These small squ squales, why do I keep saying squales? <laughs>